Hi there, um, I'm going to talk about our continuous contour line assignment uh, with drawing a shoe. Um, this is a, pretty much a finished drawing of what you'll be doing and notice how it takes up the entire page. Uh, so it has a good relationship with positive and negative space. We don't want to have some little shoe in the middle of the page being entirely swallowed up by all the uh, surrounding space. So regardless of what size your shoe is, here's what I'm going to demo within a little while. If the shoe's this big, you'd still be drawing it larger to fit onto your 18 by 24 sheet of paper. If you have a boot, you would turn your paper vertically and a shoe, which is you know, generally wider than it is tall, you turn your paper horizontally. So that's this drawing at its finished stage and you'll notice there's a lot of lines in here. So when the drawing was, 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 was being done, it first was started very loosely and then developed more and more to this stage. So I'm going to take this drawing out, and this drawing is in, in the, uh, the files on Canvas. Um, this drawing is one that is a little further in development, and a uh, student drew this uh, after they loosely drew it in, and you can see where they started doing the details. So here's the loose areas in here where everything's sort of ghosted in. And then the student came in and slowly started looking for all the detail. Once again, this is modified continuous contour line drawing. The way we drew the hands, uh, the last drawing session that we met in class, we drew where we didn't lift the uh, pencil and we just kept exploring detail and carrying the pencil across the drawing onto the next area of detail and moving on from there. If you pick up the pencil too much, things get very spotty. So we want to try to have our pencil have contact with the paper the whole time while we're exploring all the detail. But before this stage, the drawing can look like this when it's starting to be developed. It can look like this, where you're laying the drawing in. Uh, I drew this up here just to show you this is what you don't want to do, just make some outline block. But this drawing was constructed with very, very loose lines, figuring out the proportion, getting all the, uh, the dimensions down before any detail would even start to be done. And then here you can see where detail just started happening. So the initial stage of the drawing, which I'll demo in a few minutes, is you kind of ghost the shoe in and get everything placed where you want it. And when you're happy with that, you can then come in and do the detail and you can clean the drawing up later so, so you don't have you know, necessarily all these other lines here. I don't mind if you have additional lines in the finished drawing, but if you want to clean some areas up, you know, it can look a little sharper. But a line drawing is just that, it's a line drawing. And we're describing the form with line. We're taking something three-dimensional, once again, putting it on a flat surface, and in this case, using lines, and only lines, no shading, except for maybe a shadow, only lines to translate what it is we're looking at physically. So this, once again, is, you know, when the early stages where everything's getting roughed out. You'll notice something in this drawing, too. Some of these lines that are laid in here and here and here, um, here, and here. These are what are called Mondrian lines. Uh, the, uh, the great Dutch artist P.A. Mondrian got credit for doing that. He probably wasn't the first to do it, but he got credit for it. And he was really, really great at representational drawing. He eventually went entirely abstract. Um, but he would draw directional lines showing changes of direction and then he would come in and deal with, you know, modify when there were curves and such. But this type of construction can be very helpful for building the drawing up once you have the proportion generally laid in. So now what I'm going to do is set this aside and bring my drawing board over here. And I'll start this shoe. Um, my 
my drawing board. There's my handy bench. Here's my paper. Now you want to get in a position where you have a good view of your shoe. You know, if your shoe's on the floor and you got to keep looking down like this, that's not so good. So I place the shoe on this table in front of me where I can see it very well, okay? It's important that we're paying attention to, to the shoe without us being distracted by being uncomfortable. Uh, if I wanted to draw the shoe over there, I would turn my bench over there. If I want to draw the shoe here, I'm turning my bench here. I want to be able to look at it while I'm drawing. So I'm looking at this shoe now, and the beginning stages of this are to lay it in. So we can uh, sort of start ghosting it in. And, and notice that I'm using my uh, arm once again. I'm not, I'm not using, uh, I'm not being wristy. I'm not in here doing this business, okay? And I'm out here and generally getting it placed in, um, not committing to anything. So, so there's no reason to be uptight about anything. I'm gonna have this coming out here. We've got the uh, bottom rubber part of the shoe coming around here and then coming up and wrapping around. Very loose at this stage, guys. Um, if I want to see the direction of this part of the rubber shoe, I'm going to hold my pencil up there, up here, from back here, closing one eye, and I can see it's going in this direction here. And then I've got this area here coming up to here, and then on up here. And you can make modifications all you want at this stage. So this is more down here, and this is coming down here a little more. Okay, um, if I want to start using some Mondrian lines at this point, I certainly could. I could say this strap back here is going that direction, and then coming down in this direction, the shoe is coming out here, the heel, before it comes down here and slightly comes back in. The rubber part here, which is going around, is coming down like this, I notice, before coming down in this direction, and then curving up here, curving down. And most shoes, folks, most shoes, it's going to raise from the ground. Notice the cast shadow under that shoe up there. Shoes almost always raise up from the ground, or toes raise up. So, so you want to pay close attention to what's happening down here. The inside of the shoe, you're going to see this curve for the arch of the shoe. Uh, the outside of the shoe, where we don't have a, uh, an arch to our foot, uh, doesn't do this so emphatically. So getting the toe to raise. Um, figuring in here, where's the threading coming down for the, uh, where the uh, eyelets are going to go for the laces. And... There's some stitching coming across here. And going across that stitching, we have our Converse logo. It's a little bent there, so we want to pay attention to that. Because since the shoe's bending in, the logo's bending.